You know, it's funny. I wasn't really planning on making a video about this, but the more I thought about it, the more the more I was thinking about this movie, um, the more I just felt compelled to talk about it. And then also, like, my Wi-Fi kind of went out. Without all the distractions that, you know, playing online with Monster Hunter Rise, you know, catching up on different animes and all this other stuff, without all those distractions, you kind of just look around for things to do and, um, my camera was sitting right here. I was thinking about the Demon Slayer movie I just watched yesterday, and I'm like, sound like something to do. Yo, what's good, my fellow main characters? My name is Bam. Welcome to the channel for another video. And today, my fellow main characters, we gotta talk about. Wait, does the Demon Slayer movie have a specific like name to it? The Demon Slayer movie, Mugan the Train, man. Yo, first off, let me just put this right here. There's going to be a section where I don't do really talk any spoilers. I'll just kind of give you my general feel about it, um, what I kind of took from it. And then we'll get into more spoilery talk. So there'll definitely be a definitive section where you guys know that there's no spoilers here, but at this point right here, there will definitely be spoilers. So like, we'll get there when we get there, right? First off, right off the bat, this movie's a 10 out of 10 for me. Like, no cap, unlimited brim on it, no cap whatsoever, taking my hat off. Listen, if you liked season one of Demon Slayer, you will absolutely love this movie, man. There's a couple anime movies that I've watched in recent years. Um, talking about Dragon Ball Super, the Dragon Ball Super Brawly movie, and then most recently for me was the second movie for My Hero Academia. If you enjoyed Dragon Ball Super Brawly, I listen, wait for it, wait for it. If you en enjoyed Dragon Ball Super Brawly, if you enjoyed the animation, if you enjoyed the art style, if you enjoyed everything about that movie, and you're up to date with Demon Slayer in terms of the anime, this movie beats that movie hands down. I don't even have no arguments, no arguments. In terms of just that animation, in terms of just the storyline, in terms of like just everything that was going on, in terms of the in-depthness of the characters. Oh my gosh, this movie just slapped. Um, went with my girl yesterday to go see the movie. We laughed. We were like, we were like in complete Segoy mode. We were in complete like a Segoy. <laughs> At the end of the movie, we were like crying, but it's just like, we just loved the movie so much. Like 10 out of 10. I don't know if she'll say it's a 10 out of 10, but for me, 110% is a 10 out of 10. Here's the thing about this movie in particular, right? There's some stuff that happens that potentially will make you feel a type of way. But in my opinion, that doesn't take away from the fact that this movie was spectacular, 10 out of 10 experience. It's just that some people weren't really in agreement with the direction the movie went in. I don't wanna spoil anything in particular. I'm saving that for the spoiler section of the review, but just so you know that the movie kind of went in a particular direction that I felt was spectacular and amazing. It doesn't take away the fact that the movie was spectacular and great. It just, certain people might not have been too happy with the outcome of the movie. Because keep in mind that this movie, uh, Mugen Train, is actually a arc in the anime, which I absolutely love. This is kind of different than what we've experienced before in um, anime-based movies, uh, especially for like long-run shonen-based anime. When movies came out before for Dragon Ball, for One Piece, and even for Bleach and Naruto, there were kind of side stories that kind of weren't really considered canon. Demon Slayer kind of is pioneering the idea of like actually taking a, a, like an actual canon arc from the series and actually was like, you know, Guys, this arc is actually pretty short. Like, I think it only covers like maybe five to seven chapters in the in the manga. I'm not too sure because I don't read the manga, but from what I'm heard, it's like really short in the manga. Like, and so I think Studio Foodable was basically like, man, listen, yo, it's so short, it doesn't even make sense to put it in the actual season of the anime. So why don't we just turn it into a movie? And everyone was, everyone in the office was like, yeah, yeah, I guess we could turn it into a movie. Shout out to Studio Foldable and the animation team, man. Oh my gosh, man. Like, their hands and eyes must have been blessed by God. They must have found a secret to everything and unlocked it to animate this movie. Bravo to the voice actors, bravo to the animation team, bravo to 
not even the broad road to the Magna Club because he's the one that created the storyboarding for everything. And you guys that don't know, um, this is kind of explained in the trailers. Um, but the story takes place at the ending of season one where they jump on the train and there is a demon that's on the train. There is a lower moon demon that, you know, um, I forget the name of the main bad guy. <laughs> Looks like Michael Jackson sometimes. Sometimes he decides to become a woman, whatever he feels like being that day. He sends them over to like, you know, sends, gives him the power of his blood and makes him like a lower moon demon and tells him like, here, do this, prove yourself, kill these, kill these demon slayers and these people and um, I'll give you more blood, I'll give you more power. That's where the movie starts off where season one ended off and... <sighs> Bro, Tanjiro, Zenetsu, and Nosuke, and my boy, Ren Goku. They put on a show, man. It's like, I really want to just go back and watch the movie again. If you watch season one and you haven't watched this movie yet, get off your booty and go watch that movie while it's still in theaters or wherever you decide to watch it. Like, go watch it freaking amazing but we're going to get into some spoilers right now so right here guys right here this is your spoiler warning in five four three two one yo can we talk about like my boy tanjiro real quick can we talk about my boy tanjiro i don't care what the next crunch roll awards is but if he does not win best boy if he does not win the best boy at the next Crunch Roll Awards, I'm gonna have to unsubscribe from Crunch Roll. It's, it's, it's gotta be like that. Just when Tanjiro realized that he was in that dream world, and he made that realize where, first off, first off, can we talk about like how Demon Slayer does this thing where anytime a specific character is on the verge of death or like needs to figure something out, like they're like their like their parents from the spiritual world has come through like you know what you must do my son you know what you must do my daughter help them out in some way Whoa. from the very vague comment that tantro's dad said he was like i guess the only way to to leave the situation is <laughs> as we see in this movie he does this a near countless amount of times, man. Like, I, someone needs to do a count of how many times, like, on screen, Tantro had to ching. But to actually do that multiple times to, like, have the willpower and mental fortitude to kill yourself, I was in awe of this boy's fortitude, this boy's spirit. And let's talk about Tanjiro's spirit, his soul for a second, man. Like what we, like his soul, mm, his soul was the purest thing I've ever seen, man. They did such a great job of animating the feel and look of what the purest soul on earth is and that's Tanjiro's soul man <laughs> the fact that Tanjiro's soul literally was like hey let me help you find my 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 soul's core and the guy's like this man's soul is so pure it even asked me why I was here it was like hey you wanted to find this right let me let me show where it is like like Tanjiro is best boy of 2021 confirmed I know the movie came out last year but I saw it this year, so Tantro's best boy of 2021 for me. I don't care. Let's talk about Rengoku, man. I don't know how they were able to do it. I don't know how they're able to take like two about two hours to make me fall in love with a character. Not just fall in love with a character. He became my favorite character within Demon Slayer, man. He gave me such All Might and Endeavor vibes. Endeavor vibes from like the passion and the heat he had inside and also his abilities. And then the All Might vibes are like, you know, I'm gonna surpass my limits and like, you know, be a good, um, be a good role model to like a Nosuke and um, Zenetsu and Tanjiro here, man. Like, <sighs> I was just taken back by him. <laughs> I was just, he's funny, he's interesting, he's like powerful, man. Like, yo, how powerful do you have to be to be like, I am under a sleep spell, unconscious, 
but I sense something is off right now, so I'm just gonna use my survival instincts and choke out this person that's in my soul right now, right? And all the characters performed so well. Um, personally, I wish I saw a little bit more from Zenetsu, you know? Um, because I feel like they could have played into Zenetsu's character a bit more with his arc because we do have, this is a sleep demon. This demon puts you to sleep. And Zenetsu's true self comes out when he slept. They, they introduced that a little bit, how he went over to protect Nezuko. Um, and he was still kind of like in a sleep state. He was still within you know that sleepy world state right but i feel like as soon as it happened as soon as he fell asleep and i feel like his sleepy form self should have got up and done some more stuff done some more crazy stuff i feel like they could have played a lot more with zinetsu's character but i think the movie wanted to focus i think the arc in general wanted to focus a lot more on tanjiro and Rengoku. And Nosuke played a big role as well, you know, and Nosuke doing his Nosuke thing. Um, but it was very, his role was very reminiscent of of when we were fighting against Ru, Rui. Um, Rui, the, you know, the, the lower the lower moon demon uh, that with, with, the, with the webs and the blood. Um, he played a very similar role to how he played in the arc with Tanjiro in terms of being a very strong support and aid. Like, yo, best assist from Inosuke in terms of preventing Tanjiro from killing himself. He was killing himself so many times within the dream that he was losing track of when he was awake and when he was asleep. So like he almost like it was crazy the amount of tension that move had I was like whoa 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 Tantro chill yo and I'm so glad that Nosuke came to and stopped Tantro I was like whoa this this arc this movie did such a great job of building up tension with inside me man it was just mm. now I think we get to the part that I think was the most exciting part of the movie and also the most controversial part of the movie so we see rengoku versus up uh, i think his name is naraka rakaka uh akaza akaza yeah that's a pretty cool name words cannot describe the quality of animation like you foldable wins i think it was very debatable who had the best animation you know you had madhouse yeah, Studio Bones, you had Mappa, who's out here pushing with Jujutsu Kaisen and stuff, right? You have all these studios that, you know, put out very high quality work, but I think with this movie right here, you foldable cemented it. We are the best. Rengoku versus Akaza. They win. It's a type of fight with the animation and the movement and the choreography is so good. It's a type of scene that you just keep rewinding and rewatching over and over and over again. <clears throat> <clears throat> Nothing hits harder than that fight, man. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm gonna be honest with you, I have mixed feelings when it comes to Akasa, right? Because the thing about his character, typically a character with his design and his look and his outlook on life is a very enjoyable character for me i love watching characters like that like instantly when i saw his design when he came on screen i was like oh my gosh i gotta cosplay this guy one day like i gotta go to some comic-con dye my hair pink put those put the lines on get my body looking right i could definitely cosplay him no difficulty you know like get my you know i gotta watch my calories a little bit but you know i think i got the i got the sauce i got the i got the meat the thing about his character that really annoyed me and I get it after thinking back on it after thinking back on it it's like my level of hate and anger I had towards him towards the end a little bit of it is not justified a little bit of it he had this intense fight with Rengoku versus Akasa intense amazing fight and what was interesting about it and me and my girl kind of talked about this concept afterwards is that Akasa was bringing up the idea of like hey listen man like you are a skillful powerful dude and i'm actually having a blast fighting you but the annoying thing about it is that even if you live from this fight and even if i live and i will live after this fight i'm a demon like i can regenerate whatever is like at some point all your skills will diminish because humans kind of work on this bell curve right Whereas like we start from age zero and then we reach a peak if we're training and pushing ourselves, right? 
and reach a peak of our physical prime. And um, Rengoku was reaching his physical prime. He wasn't there yet, but he was reaching it. And Akasa, Akasa brought up the point that humans eventually will reach a decline. Eventually they will hit old age and no matter how skilled and proficient you are, you will never be able to maintain your prime once you hit it. And Akasa was bringing up the idea that like, yo, like I want to keep fighting you for like ever. Like I want you to be a constant opponent because you're just so strong and great, but you're capped at the fact that you're human. So become a demon. <laughs> of course, that's not our boy Rengoku's character. Of course, that's not what Rengoku's about. He's a He's a Hashira, he was, he's a pillar of the Demon Slayer corpse, so he's not about to become a demon, right? At the end of the day, it's like, what Akaza is selling sounds cool, but in order to become a demon, you have to start eating people. Like, you slowly start to lose your, real, lose your sense of humanity, you start to lose the sense of who you were, right? I think only fragments of yourself that gets kind of corrupted and get, becomes distorted. Right, and that's like a theme in Demon Slayer that, like, you know, whenever Tanjiro defeats a demon or like a, a major demon character, at least in season one, um, there's always a level of like remorse because you start to get an idea of who they were before they became a demon. Like, it's an extremely distorted version of themselves. So, even if Rengoku became a demon, he might still be powerful, he might still be capable, and even more powerful as a demon because of that regeneration factor. Um, he won't be Rengoku. He wouldn't be who he is because he would be consumed by the need to devour people and he will start to get a s extremely distorted view of himself. So even Akaza, as he is now, probably is a distorted view of who he was when he was a human. So I'm, I'm looking forward, I'm looking forward in season two to get more backstory on Akaza in terms of how he was as a human. Hopefully get backstory on all of the higher upper moons. Harashras or the pillars have really accepted that. And you kind of see this in terms of all the other pillars kind of hearing about Rengoku's death. And kind of like some of them were, some of them were look, looking sad, but other of them just kind of like went to the roots of like why they do things, right? They they went to the roots of like this is why I'm a demon slayer to take care of these monstrous creatures and everything. <sighs> Jeez. Oh my gosh, it really hit me, man. It honestly really hit me when Rengoku <sighs> when he bit the bullet, man. It really hit me, but the way he died, man. The way he died is the most manliest way to go. And that's my issue with Akaza. The, reason, the one thing that's holding me back from really enjoying this man's character is how he ran away at the end, man. If he didn't rip off his arms to just run, I think he would have lost, to be honest with you. But this man, this man dips. And he runs away and Tanjiro lets him have it man Tanjiro lets him know that you are a coward you are a loser you were the one that lost this battle why are you running away now huh why are you scared <laughs> I will say I did get flustered and angry um, in that moment because my man Rangoku went hard bro like he went hard like <clears throat> so I'm in agreement with Tanjiro man like Rangoku won Rangoku did his job as a demon slayer in terms of protecting 200 people man It's just tough man because it's not the payoff that You know, I think most of us as the audience kind of wanted once you know Akasa like you know shoved his fist into like my man's gut um I was like dang that's a wrap, but then when Rangoku was like nah, I still got a little bit in me <laughs> When Rengoku brought that energy, like, if I'm going down, you're coming along with me? <laughs> At that point, I was like, okay, I can live. I can live with Rengoku dying, taking out one of the upper moons. I don't think any of the upper moons ever got taken out by a pillar before. Like, ever. So this would have been the first most devastating hit to Muzan in history. And could you imagine like the crow flying around and giving everybody word that like, yo, an upper moon has been defeated. We did lose Rengoku, sad, but Rengoku, he took him out before he left. Everyone would have been like, that's my boy Rengoku. It's so sad that's not what happened, man. It's so sad. Oh my gosh, bro. That would have been such a good payoff to be honest. And at the time when I watched the movie, I was just like, Dang, Akasa, you, you're such a coward, such a loser, bro. Like, why are you running away? But it makes sense 
sunlight coming up, you scared. But Tantra will let him know that like, hey, we as weaker beings come at you where you have the advantage. We come at you where you have all the advantages and we risk ourselves crazily. But a little bit of sunlight comes up and you're like, I gotta go. Don't talk to me, bro. Don't talk to me. Oh my gosh, but. And the movie concludes with my boy Rangoku basically leaving leaving those bars for Tanjiro and Inosuke. Rangoku is just a he's just a great character, man. He's just a great character. Like literally once I left the movie, I had to change my wallpaper screen on my phone to Rangoku. Hold up. Y'all see that? Rangoku, man. Ah, so anyway guys, this is my fanboy otaku minded thoughts about the Demon Slayer movie, Mugen's Train. I really enjoyed it. I definitely recommend, um, well, if you're still watching this part, I assume that you're already watching the movie right now, unless you're a madman and you just love spoilers. <laughs> Ufotable came correct with Demon Slayer, man. They came correct. Mm. So anyway, my fellow main characters, thank you for watching this video. Like this video if it made you smile, comment this video if it made you think, and subscribe when you see more. And always remember that you are the main character of your own story. My name is Bam, and I'm out.